<laughs> Welcome to Three Steps. This is the first part of a three-part interview with Danny Burble. He is a retired man. He's already retired at age 38, and he was able to do that by being a self-made man. He's learned how to invest and how to buy property, and he's you know really kicking ass at this thing. And the problem is, though, being retired at 38, is that it's kind of boring when all your friends are still working a nine to five. So he created a company called Grow Wealth Within, and he's helping his friends learn how to retire off their investment portfolio. Now, in this one, it's a different conversation. He has a whole different view on masculinity. As a matter of fact, he really didn't have a stand for it for a long time. Uh, he was raised by a single mom, and uh, his take on the whole situation is, it's not about being a man, it's not about being a woman, it's about being an adult. And that's how you get respect. Now, uh, when we discussed the conversation about the kind of man he wanted to grow up to be, uh, he didn't have a vision of the man he wanted to be, but he was clear on what he didn't want to be. And he made a conscious decision to be the opposite of him, him being his father. Um, well, that's a pretty interesting conversation when you go there. Uh, now, also, <laughs> He, you know, he was on his own at 17, so responsibility is a big thing to him. And he talks about how he uses responsibility to get extra fun. And he shares that information with you. Uh, when talking about his values, honesty is like the big one for him, the golden rule and all that. And uh, honesty caught him into a lot of trouble. And he's going to tell you how to avoid it. All right, see you inside. <music> Welcome to Three Steps. This is Danny Burble, and uh, I'll let him tell you who he is. Hi, I'm Danny Burble from GrowWealthWithin.com, and I retired at age 38. And I found out real quick that being retired is kind of boring when everyone you know is still working nine to five. So I started my second business, which is Grow Wealth Within, and that is all about training others how to retire off their investment portfolios and also get a control of their money. So if you can master your money, imagine where you would be in life. That's what I teach. That's a pretty awesome thing to know, I think. What does masculinity mean to you? So this is a really fun question mm -hmm. because I've always been kind of against masculinity. Mm. Um, actually, I have a joke to start with you. Sure, let's hear it. Okay. Uh, guy walks into a bar. Okay. There's a beautiful woman behind the counter at the bar. And so he walks up to the bartender and says, hey, give me the girliest drink you've got. Okay. So she rumbles around, rummages below the counter, makes a drink, puts it on the counter. He drinks it and goes, blah! This is straight whiskey. And she says, yeah, I think you should woman up and drink it. <laughs> That's a good joke. <laughs> and, and the reason why I went with that joke yeah. was because I realized that I was raised by a single mother. Yeah, me too. So a lot of the traditional male roles, mm -hmm. she filled. Yeah. She was the breadwinner, right? She, was, she set the rules. She enforced the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, she was the one who taught me how to throw a baseball. Yeah. In fact, she coached my little league team at one point because wow. the guy doing it wasn't doing a good job. Wow. So at the same time, she did all the feminine side of things, well, traditional feminine side of things, yeah. as far as cooking and cleaning, but then she would get us involved with it, so we would do it too. So the whole, what does masculinity mean to me, is a really interesting question because I tend to fall closer to the side of equality mm -hmm. because I've seen, I just had this strong presence of a female presence in my life when I was young. Yeah. Um, at the same time, my father was MIA, so I didn't really have a lot of role models there. Mm -hmm. But when I did have them in my life, I kind of thought my mom was kind of badass, mm -hmm. and he was, eh. Yeah. So, what does masculinity mean to me? Mm -hmm. It starts with a lot of the same things that I would say, um, like being a man. If someone says to you, "Why don't you be a man?" Mm -hmm. I feel like if someone said, well, why don't you be a woman mm -hmm. to a woman, it would be the same results. And a lot of that is adult. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is uh, responsible, re reliable, getting things done, not whining. Mm -hmm. And all of those things kind of encapsulate to being an, a responsible, contributing adult. Yeah. But then it does come back to, well, what does it mean to be a man? Yeah. Well, that's actually the next question. So for me... I, I first push towards that being an adult. doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. For me, that's how you get respect. Yeah. As far as being a man or a woman, it's all about using what you've got. Mm, right? Yeah. And I have to admit, in a lot of cases, men are taller than women or men are stronger than women. 
And a lot of times that ends up being the thing. Oh, right. But it doesn't always have to be the thing. No, no, you know, no. it, You could just be a bookworm or whatever it is. So a big part of it for me is realizing what is it that makes you, you. And being totally in alignment and uh, with your authentic self and just turning that up to 100%. So that's a word that gets bandied a lot. So what does authentic self mean to you? Authentic self? Mm -hmm. It's the, the part that you keep coming back to that doesn't change from context to context. Mm -hmm. right? If you and I were at a, at a bar, we might ask it a certain way compared to being at a ballet. Mm -hmm. right? But there's still us underneath all that somewhere. And that's what I mean by your authentic self. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you are authentically curious about? What are the things that are fun? When you play, what does that look like? Regardless of who's watching. And then how can you be so authentic that it doesn't matter who's watching? Mm. Okay, those are really good questions. When you were young, did you have an idea of what it meant to be a man, or what mm. what the kind of man you wanted to be when you grew up? Did you have that? And a did you grow? Did, and, and also, did you grow into it? Uh, just being a hundred percent honest, I didn't have a role model in my life, a male role model. Mm -hmm. And when I did, when I finally did make a decision to move from living with my mother to living with my father, I very quickly realized this is not the kind of man I want to be. Mm -hmm. And so I made a conscious decision to be the opposite of him. Ooh, okay, yeah. Uh, I realized that he would never be the man that I needed. Mm -hmm. And I made a decision to be that man. And that man was the opposite of him. Okay. So, so did you wind up growing into that man? Uh, I, would, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever have that I'm an adult moment? Not really. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like when I was younger, I swore that I would never grow up. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And I went into video game programming. Right. So, I, I mean, I worked for Activision, Namco, Sega. Yeah. And uh, my whole thought was, I don't want to grow up, and I'm not going to be confined by these rules that everyone keeps telling me, keeps pushing me towards. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, I never really looked forward to growing up, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. But I was on my own. I right. went from the East Coast to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I had no safety net. And so, it was basically all me all the time. And I didn't realize that I was being an adult, but I was. Oh. So at age 17, I was arguing with the woman at the bank in Canada that, no, no, you're going to open a bank account for me yeah. because I don't know anyone in this town and I've got to cash this check. Right. Because so if, if people will trust me to be out here at age 17, I think you should too. Yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. There sounds like there's a distinction for you between adult and grown up. So what, mm. what is that distinction? Distinction between adult and I think grown ups are boring. Yeah. <laughs> you get no argument for me here about that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's funny. I, I realize I'm an incredibly responsible person. Mm -hmm. I also have a lot of forethought and like proactive type stuff that I do. And all of it is so that I could play. Mm -hmm. right? I, I'm all about getting all your T's crossed and your I's dotted way ahead of time so we can block out this big chunk of time to go have fun. Yeah. And fun, fun could be anything. It doesn't have to be crazy exciting. It could be chilling and watching a movie. But I, I push for being extra responsible so I can have extra fun. Did you always trust men? Uh, wow, I never gave that any thought. Uh, can you give any context? Like, yeah, did you, did you tr and when you were growing up, did you trust men? Or now do you trust men in your life? Uh, I'm going to say I never thought about it, so... I don't feel like I'm falling on either side of the line right now. Huh. That's so a, that's a very fair answer. Yeah, like I, it's not like I was drawn to trusting men, and it wasn't like I was repelled from trusting men. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a very fair answer. Hmm. Yeah, they're always different. They're always different. The guys give many different answers, and some men, you know, coming up, they don't trust men at all, and some men coming up are like, oh yeah, instinctively I trust men. I had men around me, I, I trusted. If it's not on your radar, then it's not on your radar. Hmm. And so it's it, it can be a very sticky conversation for some guys. Really? Yeah, it really wow. can. Because there's a you know there's a lot of guys that grow up coming up they don't have good experiences with guys uh, with men as as they're a boy or as they're a teen. Oh, okay. And so then they're like, I don't trust men. Fuck men. You know, they're all bad and wrong, and our men are all men evil. And it's like it comes up. It happens. So hmm. yeah, but that you didn't have that experience is pretty fucking awesome. Well, I mean, I'm also a, I don't I don't want to say a different kind of man, but like things like. Sports and things like that, where you're you're in a direct uh, 
a pushback between two teams mm -hmm. were never appealed to me. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've drawn to the sports where you're kind of playing against yourself. So you were talking about surfing mm -hmm. and snowboarding and rock climbing and things like that where I'm trying to do this better than I did it last time and there's no one else who could really say anything about it. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. It's great. Um, I know that I definitely have some issues with direct conflict mm -hmm. and I wonder if that's why I never ended up in a lot of sports and because I never ended up in a lot of sports, I didn't actually end up in the locker rooms with men acting mm -hmm. shitty to each other. Yeah. That's a fair so, answer. So yeah. what do values mean to you? What, is, what does that mean? How does a guy figure out their values? Uh, I, uh, that's a good question. When I was in high school, I got kind of lucky. Somebody asked me that question, mm -hmm. and I ended up writing it down. And I believe writing is one of the best ways to really get things to like sink in your head because mm -hmm. you see what you're thinking. And I wrote down uh, honest. I go out of my way to be honest. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I wrote. And so one of my first core values in life was honesty. And that took me really far, also got me in a lot of trouble. Because mm -hmm. people don't always want honesty. They do not. <laughs> really? <laughs> I love, I love, it. so, oh, I'm, yeah. Go yeah. on, go on. <laughs> so I learned real quick, I wanted to be honest, but I also had to learn to uh, interact with people in a manner where they could receive the honesty and not just immediately reject it and basically start some kind of fight or... Well, how, how do you do that? I'm sure someone over there is asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, uh, uh, asking permission is one of the best ways. Mm. So uh, if I turn to you and I said, well, I, can I be honest? Mm. And people will realize that I'm about to be authentic with them. And if, and if that's the case, they're interested. Mm. But if I just throw, this is what I think. Everything you're doing is stupid. Like, that's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. But if you can have a real conversation and say, okay, can I be honest with you? Like, say you, you gave me something to critique. Okay, like I worked with a lot of artists in games. Mm -hmm. Artists give you something to critique. Cool. C can I be honest with you? I really like all these things over here, but I'm worried about this right here. How would you do it better? Mm -hmm. And it's, I never told them it was bad or anything like that. I never told them how I would do it. It's a kind of a challenging them to up their game on themselves. Mm. Honesty was one of your first values. And what, how, how, how did you figure out what your other values are? I found out that I was grounded in uh, the golden rule. So treat others the way you want to be treated. And once I realized that, honesty and the golden rule have really been my two guiding forces. Mm. At some point I realized uh, authentic was also in there, but I feel like honest and authentic are kind of close. Mm -hmm. right. so, Thanks for watching. What do you think of that conversation? Different, right? I mean, what do you think about masculinity? Leave, me, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this whole conversation. Also, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and join us in the Facebook group. Now, I'll see you on Wednesday. All right, bye-bye.